Hello, everyone. Welcome to GoCast. Hey, Patrick. How are you? Great. It's awesome to be here. Can you start by introducing yourself, who you are, where you come from, what you yeah. do? Yeah. Patrick Garrity, uh, work in security research. Uh, so over the last two years, worked at a company called Volncheck. Uh, and then prior, really, I've been building product security tooling for the last 13 years. So companies oh. like Duo Security, Census, Blue Mira, Nucleus Security. And so just have a, a love and a passion for uh, working in cyber and technology and super curious and kind of transitioned more recently to the Intel side, which has been just a joy to like hop in and get in the weeds and do a lot of meaningful re research. When you started, what was the buzzword 13 years ago? Well, 2012, most people hadn't adopted cloud services yet. Cloud so, yeah. you know, cloud was very early. And when I was at Duo, I was the first salesperson, the first sales engineer. So I did all the deployments. But the biggest objection we had at the time was how could we use a cloud service for security? And it was actually one of the first cloud services most people adopted because it was an additional layer of security. So so things have changed a ton. Every, sure. Everything is driven by the cloud nowadays. So sure. And you know what? I remember cloud, cloud, let's go cloud, cost reduction. But now we have on-prem and cloud and hybrid. Right? Oh, all <laughs> the above. All <laughs> the above. All the good fun. Yeah. And so you specialize in what today? What's Volncheck? Yeah. So the, the last couple of years, I've focused on vulnerabilities and exploitation and looking at the data and looking at trends and looking at vulnerability disclosure, helping push vulnerability disclosure and exploitation disclosure. I spend a lot of time looking at what's being exploited in the wild, what technologies are being targeted, what categories, and how do we get this information to defenders so they can act really, really fast and quick in relation to that, that in intelligence and that information. You know what? That's super interesting because we had a conversation earlier today and basically the conclusion is that offensive, the red side really share techniques and, and how they do, you know, attack, but the blue side, not so much. Yeah. Right. So what do you think about it since you, you, you specialize really in vulnerability? What's yeah. That? How do we translate that? Well, that's kind of interesting that you're saying because like, people are hesitant to disclose what got exploited, when it got exploited, how it got exploited. That information is really meaningful. And the quicker you can disclose that information, the quicker other defenders know that they should, probably should patch. They probably should put mitigating controls in place. They should take action. So I'm always encouraging people disclose as much as you can possibly publicly coordinate as much as you can with product vendors, with the industry, with Intel, with government, the more information sharing that happens, the better it is for every everyone mm -hmm. uh, in, in helping understand like there is a real risk. It's an active risk and you should probably do something about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we don't congrats enough, a blue team finding stuff in the network versus, you know, hackers. Oh yeah, I did, you know, Pentas and yeah. found a vault. Yay. You know, so. <laughs> do you see in the community event that are more focused around that spe specifically? I mean, blue team or defense side? I mean, more and more you see red teams, blue teams working together within organizations. I think the aspect of understanding the risks from a red team perspective, penetration tests, and seeing if something's truly vulnerable. But collaboration, certainly with the defender uh, side as well, of, hey, no, this is actually vulnerable. You should put this, this stuff in place. So I think there's a lot of communication always, it, more and more. And I think the, the industry has changed quite a bit where that two-way communication across the board and then security getting out of its bubble a little bit more and getting closer to application security and the whole rest of the world that's non-security, building applications and tooling and all that stuff. Yeah. So that's probably like more important than even security teams talking internally is like going and talking with the the people that are building the applications, building the technology and writing code. Yeah. Well, you know what? Something interesting was that AI, of course, bubble AI, I don't want to go too deep in that topic, but because we've been talking a lot about it, but AI has this effect. We're breaking silos eventually because of AI, because all of the topics are collaborating within the same LLMs, right? So yeah. on your side of the story, what do you think about like AI or in general? It's really early. Uh, is my observation. Working in technology for a long time, I think there's opportunities to apply it. I think the difficult thing to navigate today is everyone is throwing all these things at AI mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a trust us mentality with these. And so generally I'm a person that's hesitant where I want to see proof in what it does. And I use AI tooling every, every day. Like 
I need to write a Python script, I'm probably going to use ChatGPT to help me and navigate down that approach. But I I think generally speaking, there's a lot of mix of marketing FUD, uh, a lot of misuse of artificial intelligence, people throwing an AI at things for the sake of saying it's AI generated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And so from a consumer standpoint, it's really difficult to understand like what actually moves the needle and what doesn't. Uh, I think over time that's going to flush out. And we already see some really valid use cases where it makes a lot of sense but like to think that everything is just going to be driven by ai we're, we're kind of looking over some core fundamentals which is you can automate things without ai so it's a balance of like should something be automated or should we leverage ai to accomplish this task and i think a lot of times people are going down the AI path because it's easiest now when in fact what they're doing should just be automated. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a balance, but really cool time in technology to like see all the innovation and the exciting things going on. Uh, Cause I think it has a ton of potential in a lot of different use cases. Yeah, for sure. And it will fast track a lot of things as well. Right. So, yeah. Um, okay. I don't want to go into any spoiler alert, but, uh, What's up in one hour? I'm going to be talking about exploitation. And I I took the information and data we had from the first half of 2025. But we'll be talking about the vulnerability threat matrix. So known exploited vulnerabilities. We'll also be talking about product vendors and categories. I think the main thing that's interesting here when I talk about product categories being targeted for exploitation is it can really help the defenders think about what they need to automate patching for, what they need to put mitigating controls in place. and kind of boxing it from different perspectives of like, well, you have edge devices, you know, that are highly targeted. Mm-hmm. You have content management systems like WordPress, you have IoT systems, and, and all these technologies are being targeted, but I don't think a lot of people think of them categorically in ways that there's different teams administrating these systems True. and products. So how do you build relationships with these different parts? Very nice. We have a skateboard here. Yes. What's up with that? I love skateboarding. I actually went last night in Montreal is the largest indoor skate park in Canada. Oh, do we have that? Yeah. Yeah. It's called La Taz. Most people I've talked to are like, I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> so I went there last night. As soon as I got to the off the plane, I went straight there. I skateboarded for a couple of hours. I love skateboarding. I skateboard all over Detroit. I have an amazing group of friends that I skateboard with. And then unfortunately, my cousin passed away in January, uh, Stevie Rich. And And so I thought the best way, uh, since we skated together, to memorialize her was to get kids in Detroit skateboards. And when we give them away, I put a Stevie Rich sticker on them. So I get to see all these kids skating and get to remember my cousin all the time. Patrick, it was super cool conversation. Awesome. And uh, see you soon. We'll come in Montreal. uh, Hey, thank you so much for having me. Pleasure. Thank you.